This will hurl you from the ramparts, unhappy death. In his anger, one whose brother, perhaps Hector slew, or his father, or even his son, since so many Achaeans grip the broad earth in their teeth at Hector's hands. For your father was no gentle man in sad battle. Therefore the people mourn him through the city, and cursed is the grief and lamentation you have laid upon your parents, Hector. And to me, beyond all others, will be left painful sorrow, for you did not reach out your hands to me from your bed as you lay dying, nor did you speak some close word to me while I might always remember through the nights and days as I shed my tears. So she spoke, crying, and the women in response mourned, and Hecuba led them next in passionate lament. Hector, far the dearest to my heart of all my sons, while you were alive you were dear to the gods, who now care for you, even in your ill-fated death. Other sons of mine, Achilles of the swift feet, would sell whomever he captured beyond the murmuring salt sea into Samothrace, into Imbros, and sea-spattered Lemnos. But he plucked your soul from you with his tapered bronze spear and dragged you again and again around the tomb of his companion Patroclus, whom you slew. Nor did he raise him from the dead so doing. Yet now you lie fresh as dew, unsullied in my heart, like one whom Apollo of the silver bow approaches and kills with his gentle arrows. So she spoke, weeping, and stirred incessantly wailing. Then third among the women, Helen led the lament. Hector, far dearest to my heart of all my husband's brothers, too true, my husband is Alexandros, of godlike beauty, who led me to Troy. Would that I had died before, for this is now my twentieth year for me, since I set out from there and forsook my fatherland. But never, never yet did I hear a harsh word or an abusive word from you. But if someone else would revile me in these halls, one of my husband's brothers or his sisters, or one of my fine-robed sisters-in-law, or my husband's mother, but my husband's father was like a kind father always. You, with soothing words, would restrain them with your gentle nature and kind speech. Therefore I weep, grieving a heart for you, for me, for our ill-fated, together, for no longer is there anyone else in broad Troy to be kind or friend to me, but all shudder at me. So she spoke, crying, and in, in response, all the great multitude moaned. Then old Priam spoke his word among the people. Men of Troy, now fetch lumber to the city. Have no fear in your heart of cutting ambush by the Argives. For Achilles, as he sent me from the black ships, gave orders thus that he would do no harm before the twelfth dawn comes. So he spoke, and the men yoked the oxen and mules to the wagons, and soon they were gathered before the city. For nine days they brought an immense pile of lumber and when at length the tenth dawn showed, bringing light to mortals, then shedding tears, they carried forth bold Hector. 
On the very top of the pile, they placed his body, and on it flung the fire. And when dawn, born of the morning, showed forth her fingers of rosy light, then around the pyre of illustrious Hector, the people gathered. First, they extinguished the burning pyre with dark, gleaming wine. Entirely, all that retained the fire's strength. And then his brothers and his comrades picked out his white bones. <clears throat> As they wept and the swelling tears fell from their cheeks, and having the bones, they placed them in a golden box. After covering them round with the so soft purple cloth, swiftly they placed these in a hollow grave and covered it. From above, with great stones, they set close together. Lightly, they heaped up the burial mound. Lookouts were set all around, lest the strong grieved Achaeans should attack before. And when they had piled up the mound, they started back. Then, having come together, they duly gave a glorious feast in the house of Priam, king nurtured by Zeus. Thus, they tended the funeral of Hector, breaker of horses. <clears throat> 